great. I always get excited when I hear like dogs, animals, birds, and children um, as well. So um, the theme for this conversation, and as we spoke to Sawan and kind of tried to frame this conversation, is really uh, around, um, which is part our work around how to model productive dialogues in a diverse, equitable, and inclusive manner with diverse communities. Um, and diverse is really also our intercultural um, elements of, of how we show up and who we are and where we come from. And particularly in the schooling community, in our larger communities, the last while has really been an interesting time to focus on our diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it's an ongoing conversation. And for schools in particular, it's very important um, the whole education system, very important to consider what does it look like to, to, to focus on our diversity? Um, what does it look like to, to include interculturally uh, when we have so many different elements? And what that does, if we consider it, it creates a sense of belonging. So I'm going to pause a little bit and just um, speak about belonging. Um, let me just stop sharing do a different version of sharing, otherwise it's gonna close my whole screen. So when we think about um, belonging and, 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 and connectedness, and all of us as in the education space absolutely knows what Bronf Bronfen Brenner says about creating connection and belonging. And the story is that me as an individual or the child in the center and the different systems around the individual and Bronfen Brenner speaks about connection is really for any person who has a strong sense of groundedness, connectedness in this multiplicity of the fears of our, of, of, of our lives and the influences. And if we are centered in a particular way and if we show up fully and wholly with our identities, who we are, with our race, it's really then allowing us to live our fullest life and navigate our potential um, and, and be champions for ourselves. And so what he speaks about is connectedness and how we connect to each other in a relational way. So if Marlene is at the center, if a child in a class is at the center, if Selwyn is at the center, if Hanali or Notolo or Gary is in the center, how do we show up um, with those around us? And how does that inform our psychological, physical, um, uh, spiritual, economical, all the well being that we require as individuals um, and, and as a collective and as a society? So, as part of that, we come as diverse people. And when we speak about diversity, it's really a noun around the differences and similarities. There's all kinds of diversity markers in terms of our race, our gender, our religious uh, affiliations, and and then and, and also our, our levels of education, whether I'm single or married, and all of those diversities that inform who we are and our lived experiences. And then inclusion as a verb is really a call to action. Right, we are diverse and come from diverse, and we want to be included in in different ways, and 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 as part of that, we also speak about equity and and equality. So when we speak about that in our schools, in our systems, how do we allow for equity and equality to show up in the different spaces? And um, Mandate Molifi is a is a very well known organization across South Africa that does this kind of work and transformation work with, with leaders. The other important aspect is intersectionality. When we think about the children in our schools and those that we serve, there are so many layers, even us as individuals, of intersectionality. And how do those overlap and intersect? I am a woman, I am a mother, I am a wife, I am a, 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 an employee or an employer, and all these layers that forms part of who I am as Marlene and how they show up. And the gift of kind of diversity and our intersectionality is some we are born with, um, my, my sexual orientation, my, my race, and all of those I'm born with. And then there are those that I acquire and they overlap 
with, with each other over time, right? And so when we, we think about ourselves as individuals, how do we consider and how do we see each other as, as, as equals within who we are and, and how we show up? And so what we do within intersectionality, diversity, equity and inclusion is really for, um, if we explore, not only through our names, but also our stories and our journeys, explore and the things that we learn from each other as we become curious. And so within that, within our schooling communities, within our larger community, when we think about a few weeks back, I think there's a call to action in terms of how we include, how we see each other, how we work with each other in schools, in our schooling communities, with our pa the parents from the schools, with our uh, businesses, with our uh, government uh, entities. How do we engage and what's the call to action? And the call to action both at an individual level and as a collective is really to take deliberate and decisive, decisive steps to say, I'm going to make sure that I feel part, everyone else feel part of a school, a community. The elements of social cohesion does not just happen through singing the anthem, does not just happen through uh, uh, to having a pledge. It is how do we on a day-to-day -day basis in our schools, in our communities, walk the sense of belonging I am part of, to walk the citizenship, the patriotism that we want to see. The other call is also to be vigilant and consistently um, looking out for the voices that are excluded. As Marlene in the space, to see and celebrate the diverse people, the diverse names that I see on the screen. I don't see um, faces. And, and that's a celebration of us as a nation and, 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 and really um, a reminder of how diverse we are and that we can do together as diverse as we are. Because at the end of the day for ourselves and for everyone else, we want the same um, joy, happiness, love, we want it all. And then also ensuring that everyone is able to bring their best. So one of the things that we continue to ask is how do you ensure that teachers, principals, the schooling community, the parents, the children bring their best? And so because this is about transformative dialogue, dialogues, how do we choose to include ourselves and, and speaking for those that are included, but truly choose up for ourselves to, to include others. So what we're going to do as another uh, breakout activity is to have meaningful dialogues. But when we have dialogues and have conversation is really, uh, I always say, you listen with your head, right? You listen for facts, whatever facts Marlene is saying. I can speak about Braun von Brenner because there's research around what, what's been done there. But Marlene also has, um, heart and emotion and passion. And so what are you listening for when someone speaks about, even if I speak about my name, right? Nokolo says my name is Nokolo and, and, and this is what it means, that's a fact. But then when you listen for the heart and she was saying, it's about my identity, then you tap into that. And that's what you feel because she's proud of her identity. And there's some reminiscing about where she comes from, even listening to Gary speaking about Hanan. It's the sense that there's meaning to the name and there's a story behind the name. And that's the heart. And sometimes we get a little bit emotional, right? Um, if I would say my, my, my name was given to me by my grandma mother's, and my grandmother's passed on, but thinking about her, it's a joyful, full emotion or sadness, right? So there's feeling that comes with the story that we tell. And then also um, listen for action. So action for yourself and the listening is for yourself and the person that you are listening to. For example, Selwyn said, oh, I need to find out for my mother what it means, who oh, I'm curious about this. And perhaps for Gary, um, the curiosity around, oh, maybe I should find out about this name. Gary and where I get it from, right? So it shifts and, and there's action and then intent and this is the direction um, that I want to go into. So when we do meaningful dialogues as well, we use dialogues, we say, um, we use dialogues to help people to understand but also to identify what next. 
if you have meaningful dialogues, it's also used in context of conflict where there's a little bit of tension where we don't see eye to eye. So imagine if you have meaningful dialogues with the parents in schools or with the principal or with the district official around an issue that you are really grappling with and how that can shift the conversation. And instead of having the sense of tussle and fight, it's rather a sense of talking together to find solutions. And those are meaningful dialogues. And the layers of listening goes deeper and deeper when we shift from our head to our hearts and we listen with both and we, we decide to move forward into solution mode. And those are some of the processes that we generally follow with our, our partners that we work with across systems. So whether it's in schools, whether it's in a government system, but, but different ones. And so the next is really around, because our dialogues and what we want to do through these meaningful, deep conversation is to shift, to see with similar eyes, to align to a larger purpose and to shift. But the gift of dialogue is that it becomes, it comes from a place of I would say simplicity, and then it shifts in, into a place of complexity, but it's always towards finding solutions. So imagine if you are married, you're speaking to your spouse or your partner. If you have children, you're speaking to them in the deepest meaningful way and how it shifts the conversation. Um, I hope my son is not listening. He is he's, um, supposed to do his driver's uh, license test. Um, and every time I feel I have to push him to, to do his, to go out and drive and test. Uh, yes, I'm nervous and I'm helping him. Um, uh, and and uh, I, I apply brakes as he's, as he's driving. And I choose how I want to support him. Either I'm going to be uh, all upset and nervous and show my nervousness and say, don't drive like this before we even get into the car. Or I'm going to grin and bear and pretend sometimes that I'm, which it is, I have his best interest at heart. I want him to succeed. So I'm going to support him and wait for him to ask and listen and listen to what he's saying and, 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 and what he's struggling with instead of just telling him, you need to do this, you need to apply the clutch and all of those things. So there's a way in which, and there's a choice that we make. So when we have this in our schools, in our systems, these complexities of different experiences and perspectives. It's like this large, big, beautiful elephant. And depending on where you sit and where, how you see the world, your lived experiences and your history, you see it from different angles. So imagine we are all blindfolded and we, we, we feel different parts of the, the elephant, right? And I just don't want to be the one who's right at the back in the dung of the elephant. But really, you, then you see the elements of the system or the elements of the challenge from different angles. But if you come together and you have dialogue, an appreciative, positive dialogue, that is what makes the difference um, in the journeys that, that we walk. So with a positive dialogue, the approach that we use when we have dialogues is called appreciative inquiry. And it's really looking at um, positive stories and positive journeys that, um, and also focus on what, what, what's working and also what is those positive experiences that we've had before that we can perhaps learn from. So now with the, with the gift of the gab of breakout rooms and conversations, what we are going to invite you to do is to have another conversation, this time in groups of four or five. And your question that you are going to, or the story that you are going to think about and, and talk about is really about a moment when you felt a deep sense of connection, felt a deep sense of belonging to the school that you are in. So either as a teacher, either as a principal, or when you think back about your own experience when you were at school as a student or a learner, and what created that deep sense of connection? What happened? What did it feel like to be connected? 
And who else made that sense of connection, that sense of energy, positive energy? Who made that possible? And then why is the sense of belonging and connectedness so important? Um, so you can go with the conversation where you want um, because it's open and the aim is to, to focus on di dialogue, um, to also listen with your head, your heart and your hands, but really to, to, uh, to listen to each other's story from a place of learning about what is it that creates that sense of connection. And I, I run a program called Social Connectedness and so this is my bread and butter. And the learning is that whether you are in a school, whether it's in the workplace, whether you are at home, whether you are in your church, relationship and connectedness is key for our well-being, but it's also key for how we navigate our differences, how we navigate the system, how we navigate the work that we have to do. We say connection before content, connection before the work. So even in, in the, the previous uh, leadership forum presentations, a lot of the principals and whoever shared was talking about the relationships that they have with others, with the staff, with, with the children. And so when we say, talk about the sense of belonging, it's really about the relationships that you have. So what we want you to dream into and think about is those moments when connection and relationship um, and that sense of belonging in the school has been such a deep part of who you are and, 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 and the best part of, of who you are. So, Sawan? Marlene, um, how many minutes do you want it? So, um, in groups of four, perhaps 12 minutes so that they at least have a first round of conversation and then uh, a second. And groups of four. No problem. Yeah. How many minutes? About 12 minutes. Yeah. And so the reflection questions that I'm pasting into the chat is really to think back and, and, and appreciative inquiries about thinking about the highest, your peak point of when you were happiest. Um, for me, it's when I was little and in school. And as I said earlier, I went to teach in the same school. And, and, and so had the principal as my principal and then had my principal as my colleague. And Mr. Betty was just um, such a pleasure to learn from because he was a historian. As, uh, um, and, 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 and so those moments of spending time and really feeling that the history of the school, um, the energy of the school that really connected me to being part of. Um, and so I relate back to my alma mater to this day in, in that way as well. Um, and so for you to, to I paste it into the chat, think back to a moment when you felt a deep sense of belonging or felt connected within your school. What made it happen? What did it feel like? Because emotion is so part of it. Who else was making you feel like you belong? And why is the sense of belonging and connectedness important for each person who is part of the schooling community? So, and please, please feel free to have conversation and share the airtime and space with each other in true dialogue form. And we'll see you in about 12 minutes. If, they, if, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself uh, before you go into the room. Um, yeah. Maybe just a technical, a bit of technical guidance for those who didn't manage to join the breakout rooms earlier. You're going to see a little pop up message come on your screen and you need to click join so that you can then enter the breakout room and then you'll have to unmute yourself to be able to speak to the rest of your, uh, the, the rest of the people in your breakout room. So I hope this works. Yeah. And Fantastic. just then say, yeah. At the closing, Salwan, do you want to say? No problem. Continue. Oh, I just wanted to say, and then we will automatically close the room after when the time is when the time is up um, after the twelve minutes. Um, yeah, but just um, any insights? Look at Claire smiling. <laughs> any insights around your experience? Um, telling your story or thinking back. Someone was just telling us about his sports uh, love and interest and the chiyas on the bus 
when you go for those sport uh, sport meetings. Um, yeah, we used to. Um, that used to be my favorite part. And when we scream, Shai Zule driver, and the driver must just go in the bus and it's all excitement. You have no worry in the world. And, and that's the high point of, um, but also where you feel so part of the, the school and part of the energy of the school. Yes, please share and please share. I was sharing with um, the people in our room and uh, the realization actually just came to me as I was speaking that in sharing high and euphoric moments um, at my school and feeling that sense of belonging and connectedness, it actually formed a really good uh, basis for when I experienced the lowest part of my life as well. And so being able to be part of a community where we say, you know, if one person succeeds, we all succeed. It also then means that if one person hurts and grieving, then everybody enters into that with me and with each other. And I'm deeply grateful for that sense of belonging and connectedness. Thank you very much for, for, for sharing that. Um, what comes to mind is Ubuntu, and you said it so beautifully, that interchange and integration of our feelings, our sense of being, um, so absolutely. Anyone else wants to share? Yes, my name is Alta. Hi. Uh, being, being in this group, I mean, it's three complete strangers that I meet today, but we all here because we have the, the purpose, we've got some purpose that connects us. And, and in my group, I just completely appreciate it, um, you know, you set a very safe environment in the session and how people open up about deep things, you know, and, and that emotionally really got to them. Um, and yeah, one will always have appreciation for that. And that immediately cre creates for me another level of connectedness when people are vulnerable in front of you when they allow themselves to show that vulnerable part. Thanks, thanks, Alta. And that is part of what theory you, it's theory you, the deep dive. When you go deeper with each other, how deeply you connect. And part of it is vulnerability, not necessarily vulnerability to sadness, but really vulnerability to opening ourselves, those onion layers, peeling it back and showing a little bit more of who we are authentically. So that absolutely allows, and that's the gift of dialogue and storytelling um, with each other. Thanks. Debuho? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Hi. Uh, what question am I answering? What I took out from the breakaway? As you wish, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, what everyone has shared. Um, yeah, it's interesting also just the, the diversity of experiences, um, how it's, uh, it's so different yet it's, it's similar, you know, because it, it, it all leads to, you know, the center that is, you know, community, um, which is, yeah, I mean, the human need ultimately for whether you're a kid, you know, or you're a staff member, a teacher, you know, support staff. Uh, I think it's all fulfilling that need of the basic human need of community, you know, and it's a need that in the sphere of, I guess, the professional sphere, like sometimes you forget and it's, it's one that's, you know, not prioritized as much. Uh, and yet it's this driving force that can actually cause optimum, you know, um, achievement and results if it's channeled correctly or if it's prioritized in a sense so yeah that's I guess the conclusion that I reached and the new perspective I get from the breakaway that like this is not something that you kind of you know I, I would imagine from a managerial perspective uh, is on the to-do list but yet it should be you know up there you know on the to-do list for any school because it's it's what helps keep things running you know and, and, and makes us feel human, <laughs> yeah. Yes, and show up as our whole selves, right? 
yeah, if you yeah, genuinely yeah. ask someone how are you feeling today and you really mean it and someone really gets to share and then after that move along right but just pausing to authentically and, and, and intentionally see each other thank you uh, Gary I am going to call on you uh, please thanks go is that what happens if you leave your your movie on that is, on. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you suppose if you look away, that's when you call on people. <laughs> yeah, Marlene, it, it was it was really it was really interesting in in our group how how three experiences were were sort of like a Venn diagram coming together over over vulnerability, belonging authenticity um, and I think I think each each of our each of our experiences which were, were vastly different I, I spoke about early childhood mm -hmm. um, Felicia spoke about um, her, her recent teaching post and Valencia spoke spoke about her, her work and and I think the the key thing for, for all of us is, where we where we felt like we could be heard where we felt like people were being authentic and where we felt like there was there was a space to speak that was the natural space that we all we all landed up at um yeah yeah so that's that's sort of my take thank you so much and thanks for those nuggets around space to speak space to be heard that is so important, um, that make us feel grounded and part of, um, and that's the belonging, so, so thanks for that. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand over to, to Magali, and just to, to honor and thank you all for participating and navigating and shifting with us in this virtual space. I really appreciate it, and for listening to me and, and, and just participating so meaningfully and honoring the time that you've allocated to this. And, and, and being part of this. Um, yeah, so thank you. Over to you, Magali.